Hey guys, welcome to episode seven of a series on the repair of a sun-baked Bajo Quinto guitar, which is used to play Norteño music, and it is basically a 10-string guitar, kind of like a 12-string guitar, but the double course strings are arranged and toned in a way that makes music of North Mexico, banda music especially, sound like the tuba and bass music that it shares its roots in, which is European polka and waltz music. In that playlist, it's very interesting. If you're coming into it at this point, you're either following the progression or degression, regression, all of that, uh, or you've stumbled across this because you are wanting to learn how to fix cracks in a guitar. Before I move on, shout out to my friends in Mecca, California, cultural capital of the world. There is a, an episode called Who is Palmero? And you will see where the name Palmero, because I'm Ken, I'm not Paul. Do I look like a Paul? Did I write the Bible? Hello? Palmero is actually Palmero, which is people who work in the crowns of especially date palm. So hey, check that out. You'll get a laugh out of it. And you will also see a forced appearance by Kendra who bagged on me in the episode called Tuners, but Kendra turns 24 years old today. She's been through sociology. It didn't help me. She's got a minor in music industry that she learned off of watching all these people that were fortunate enough to see. Um, she's in law school now. She's studying, that's right, music law and was just accepted to the MBA program. You see what happens when I'm your father? Yeah, I tried, but your fault if it didn't come through. Anyway, anyway, don't show this to anybody that knows me. Just go ahead and believe that what I'm telling you is the gospel truth. Now, I have a question for you. What would you do if you could buy an instrument that needed some work and you could probably make a couple thousand dollars doing the repair if it was done correctly? Well, let's pick an instrument. I don't know, maybe a 1918 Gibson L4 with an oval sound hole. This was before Lloyd Lore came out with the F holes and maybe somebody stepped on it, maybe it fell over, maybe there's a crack in the sides that goes across the heel of the neck, I don't know. What would you do? Well, you might practice on junky guitars like the Rex up here, do you see it? It's got cracks everywhere, side cracks, and you might repair that and then when you figure out that you can do that and make your mistakes on junk, then you might actually decide, hmm. <laughs> yeah, guys, that's what this is really about. This is a Gibson, a 1918 Gibson L4. You saw it in the episode, Easy Come, Easy Go, Gretsch for Gibson. Yeah, I traded that 1954 Gretsch Electromatic. That was awesome. By the way, Guitar Center in Westlake, all you people in there, yeah, I heard you were fangirling me and that guitar when our friend Jim brought it in. You're welcome. Anyway, you're going to see this one in the future. Does it matter that it's got a fancy name? Not really. Uh, but again, this guitar was worth X amount, and when this is fixed, it's worth X amount more. So that's kind of really what you got to keep in mind. So let's talk about that first. When we pulled the back off, we discovered everything inside. A lot of it needed to come out and be rebuilt. So we cut a lot of pieces and did all that. Then we figured out what are we going to do to get the, the 
sound board or top back up because it bowed in. When it bowed in, a brace collapsed and blew out the side. So this thing has been sitting around for a long time like that and we start getting it back into shape by putting some steam to it. Things start bending and creaking around. So fixing the top and steaming it back into place had some terrible casualties and the one crack in the side turned into this big gaping twisting thing. And that is what this episode is about. The guitar is still in the body press. Again, the sound, the uh, playlist is up there. There's everything you want to know about these instruments. Plus, there's a lot of structural repairs. So let's get to the shop and get these cracks in place. Notice that I am going to dry clamp everything and get it together while we're letting the top uh, respond to the steam and then we'll finally glue it together and then we're going to leave it sit. Anyway, it seems like I've already done the work and I'm telling you what happened before you get to see it happen. That's because I'm psychic, which means you should ask me about that marriage you're in right now. Sorry, I was there for you, partners. Let's get to the shop. Okay, guys, welcome back to the next day. We are not taking the body press off of this guitar for a few days. Everything's going to settle into each other. But if there was a casualty from the very beginning with this guitar drying out, it was this side. And pulling everything back together just magnified the cracking and what's going on here. So this crack literally goes from here all the way up to here and you can tell that it's jagged and it's twisted this way. So this is not something that we're going to dry up right away because or glue up right away. We're going to let it settle to itself. Now you can see that down in here there is a side brace and there's also one in here. The, th those didn't do well and they're going to be what they are. It, this cannot come back into itself if there that wasn't cut loose somewhere. So again there was a brace inside that sat on a side brace or a bottom brace, top brace, whatever you want to call it. And the way that brace, the side brace sat down, it was an L shape that sat on a cross brace. So when the cross brace failed it pitch this gets side up and that's how all this happens. So what we're, you're going to see happening here now is you're going to see me closing up this crack. This one up here is going to be dealt with separately once we get the blocking out of the inside. But so what do we do? This looks horrendous. This is kind of what I'm known to be able to do. So the first thing I want to do is take a few of these pieces of a Patron cigar box. They work out pretty good. And I cut them down into pieces like this because when you're clamping a crack, inevitably one side of the crack is going to be taller than the other. And most people want to sand that. You don't sand it. You fill the low side with lacquer and scrape it off. But I want to be able to flatten these out as much as possible. Again, we're using no glue today, but I'm just going to show you how to get everything lined up so you know what will happen. This is the big one here. Not only does it need to come together, it needs to go down right here, which means we need to stabilize this stuff out here because the more I push this, the more it's going to run and crack further. So we're going to take a couple of these deep clamps here. You see how I got to kind of think ahead here. So I am going to put one of these here and it takes 14 hands to do this by the way. There we go. And I'm going to get this just a tad tight where it doesn't fall off. That's what I want to do and I want to stabilize that for a minute. 
Then I'm going to put this. Now, I could use spool clamps just as well if this were not in this thing. But we're going to let this sit for a couple days because everything has to dry into itself. So now I'm going to go to the, remember, there's no bottom out of this. So I want to be very careful with this. And then I'm going to watch what happens here. I'm going to put that together and I'm going to feel here to see is that level with itself there, right? Now, now it's dipping down right here and of course it is because this is up. When this goes down like this, that will want to level itself out. But I want to take another one of these clamps. It's important to get these clamps in before you put the big clamps on. So you got to kind of think ahead and navigate what you want. But this is going to be an area here because this split and this split all come together right here. Now, expect that when you're doing this, other things may split. But I want to put this across where it hits all of them and brings them up into a plane right there. Now, there's a little bit of a gap there and of course there's going to be because I have to put a clamp here and as this comes together that's going to close. So this just needs to be snug not really tight. We don't want to forget about the other end because that also has something that will run. Can you see my finger? Where am I? Here. I can scoot this down a little bit. Did that get worse or better? It's better. Good. So this one I can get in way over here. And that's probably just as well. Okay. Pop that up a little bit. It runs down to right there. You want to remember when you cut this up with a bandsaw, there's some fuzz on one side. Make sure that's up when you use the clamp. And again, this is not going to be something that's going to be super tight because when I start pulling the sides in, it's going to want to come up. So you don't want that any more than you need to or it was, it's going to inhibit things coming together. So now that that's there, I can take this, see if I plan that right. I'm going to have to go over the top of this one myself. And we're going to squeeze that one together and I can lean that against there and now I can tighten that up. I can hear it. Okay, before we get rolling, I have put two of these clamps on either side. One, two, one, two. And I also have a bunch of these cleats ready and I have several pieces of cork paper just in case one side of the cleat, one side of the crack is up higher, then I can put this under the corresponding side that's higher and get a little press down when I clamp one of these in place. So we're going to take this now. You know what? I think I'll just put this one here just in case because now we're going to put this clamp on and watch what happens to that big crack. I'm going to push down a little bit because if I don't push down, what's going to happen is by squeezing it, it's going to force it at an angle and it's going to crack it worse. And this is where it's important that you realize that the ends that are clamped down already on the very end of the crack get a little bit of slack there in case they need to move. Also, make sure that there is nothing sticking up out of the crack. You see that? Let's do this one more time. Look how much it opened up. Now we're going to close it. 
I'm not putting any glue on this. Ooh, now this up here is starting to come together. We'll do this a little bit at a time. That one is going to need its own treatment, but I'm going to slack this off just a little bit. Get this up just a little tad bit higher. And then the most important part before I go along is that I'm going to want, before I tighten up this big clamp, to go along the split and ask myself, is this a little higher than this? Yeah, it is. So I can just put that little piece of cork there and then when I clamp that down, I can push a tad more on this side. Let's get that back just a little bit. And when I line that up, it's going to flatten that crack out. Yeah, if you don't have any patience, you're going to learn some now. too bad. Now when that's there, I can pull that one in just a tad more right there. There we go. Okay. This one here has two places where it's cracked. They seem to be pretty even. I'm going to put that right there. I'm going to get it up off that curve. That's what I'm going to do. Like so. Come on. Now I can get these end ones tight and I can come along with this one, this work in the other ends and pull those cracks in just a little bit more. All right, there we go. And as I go across these, there's just a couple that have a little rise, but most of them have come tight together. So again, this is dry clamping. There is no glue. And this stuff is just going to sit here while the top and the clamping call that we put in the bottom straighten out the top. So once we take all this apart, it's going to want to do its thing a lot better. If we don't get this part right, the back is going to be a nightmare. And then getting it on where the neck angle is right. Well, we've done that before, and I will show you that. But this is a good place to stop, and we're going to let this dry out for a few days just like this. Then we will take this stuff off. We will glue it and put it right back together. All right, guys, we are back. It is the next day and everything hung together. I don't know what happened inside or whatever, but most of these cracks have stayed together and now it's time to glue them up. And I am going to use some good European high glue. This is violin maker grade, cello, stand-up bass, orchestral instrument grade high glue. Um, refined all of that, I think I'll give you a link 
to the product down below. It's, in, it's expensive to get shipped here because it comes from Europe, but you can't beat it. So while we are waiting for this uh, high goo to heat up, um, I put little pieces of tape here that kind of show me the orientation and location of these wood uh, pieces that I have and whether or not there's something blocking up one side to level out the crack and where those are. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen these up a little bit. Oh, and I have to show you something. Remember, if you are applying glue on a crack and you use something that's wood to keep the crack level, guess what? It is going to bleed off and you're going to end up with this softener or leveler or whatever you want to call it glued to the side of the body of the guitar. So we're going to call on our good friend George Clinton and the Parchment Funkadelics and we're going to take these scissors that are the best. They are U-set scissors. You see they got a wire there and you adjust the tension against the blade and they are awesome. So I'm going to cut some of these little pieces of parchment paper that we can put. Look, it's got a grid on it. It must be some European something or other. But we do that and then we can put this between the guitar body and the piece of wood that we're using to keep the crack level. So we're just going to take these and move them off to the side just a little bit, like so. And then what will end up happening is we'll open up these big clamps just a little bit. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm not going to turn the camera off 15 times. That's for sure. We get these clamps out of the way. Because we've got those marker tapes, we're going to know where they are and which ones have softeners below them. Okay, now, we'll get to that one in a minute. When we open this up, wow, that one's trying to stay together. This one, that one came a long ways until just then. Okay. And this one up here, not too bad. So we're going to push some glue down in there as soon as it's warm. Before we get going here, I want to show you something pretty cool here. This is actually supposed to be a pig with a cone head that makes your phone stand up or something like that on a table. But what this is good for is you people see people using suction cups on cracks. So here's the problem I see. This is, this is cup. So if I push down, that wants to stick, right? So if I push glue in and there's a suction and I pull it out, it seems to me that the glue is going to want to pull out. Where instead, if I put it on the edge and push down and move it down the wood, it will push the glue in instead of this pump and thing. I don't know, a half a dozen one way or the other. But when I get glue on here, especially when I start closing the stuff up, I'm going to push it down in there. I don't want to glob so much glue on here that it's running all over on the inside. Now I have a couple of different size brushes and what we're going to do is we're going to get this glue along these cracks like so and just get it in there and do one section at a time get the glue in there and then get the major clamping done and before it dries up too much we're going to focus on one area push glue in 
and get it together. And then the smaller area over here that's going to close up first is probably the one we want to pay attention to, as well as this area that's shredded out pretty bad right there. Yeah, let's use motocross terms, shall we? Okay, I'm going to bring the glue pot that's still hot. This is why we use the edges of our fingers. And uh, we have a rag going on. And that hot water is there for us. We'll just open this up. And this has the consistency of sewing machine oil when it's nice and warm. But we're going to keep it nice and warm by leaving it in there. We always keep the stuff in the refrigerator when we're not using it because it will mold. So I'm going to start up here a little bit where this clamp is. And I'm going to go down where the first break is, like so. I've always got good paper towel. And the consistency of this stuff is pretty thin. I'm going to go to right there. And then I'm going to take my pig, and I'm just going to push that glue in there like that, like so, a couple of times. See, rinse that off, and we take the spot where we're going to clamp it, wipe it off there, and we know where that is. Why? Because we put the piece of tape there, like so, and. Put a piece of parchment right there. And what we are looking for is just keep that snug because when we pull this main clamp together, it's going to want to do its thing. Let's open that up a little bit. Yeah, you can see the glue popping out there now. Slack that off just a little bit. And this is one of our spots where we're going to be very interested that things turn out okay. It splits in a couple different places here. And this was one where we had the piece of cork paper. Again, you don't want to forget your, your parchment paper. That is for sure. There we go. We're going to do just a little bit more work on each end and get that clamp down, and we'll leave it sit for a while. Okay, show of hands. You know what? People, people say, if he says show of hands, don't put your hands up. Put your hands down. The war's over. How many of you were going through this and went, 
oh my gosh, he is trying to fix this thing. And it's actually, it's taking a 180. It's getting much worse. So sometimes when you do one thing, something else happens. Are we at a turning point yet? Well, I keep filming the things and I really love that $3.22 I make per episode. Uh, but that's one of the things you need to think about. Now moving ahead when we take everything off all the body presses and stuff and get the guitar sitting there on its own. We're gonna have to glue in the jigsaw puzzle reinforcements. We're gonna have to put in a bridge plate. We're gonna cut and install new bracing. I'm gonna to try to keep the pattern. Remember the pencil marks that showed you where the bracing was. We're gonna mark those and we're gonna to try to keep the original configuration. But remember the new bridge plate and the additional 16th of an inch we added which was is going to take a lot away from the acoustic quality of the guitar never had in the first place so when you are working on something like this expect that there are going to be chain reactions expect that if you take something that's dried out and you do don't do something to fix that re or remedy that condition that bending stuff around is just going to result in more cracks and more things like that. I think we're getting closer to things turning around. But again, keep in mind, when somebody brings you a guitar saying, I got good watching Ken, that's not going to help you. I mean, can you get any worse than some of the stunts I pull? So, so don't uh, risk your salvation on that but in all reality guys ask yourself look at the guitar do you have the tools to do the work do you understand the construction do you have any experience with something this was a handmade guitar probably in Paracho, mexico in one of the shops that wasn't so advanced so always remember is the investment in tools time and what you're going to get for the guitar in the end. Is it reasonable for the outcome you can expect? I enjoy doing these projects, but again, everything you see me twisting around and jumping on, I own myself, so I have the risk there. That may change at some point in the future where I just say, hey, you want this guitar? send me a message i got a lot of guitars and sometimes they're going to come up for sale now i'll leave you with this guitar repair is a sum of a number of parts of an equation what are you working with what was it worth when it was new some people say, hey, how much is that guitar worth? Well, how much will somebody pay for it in this market? You have to understand this market. It's a buyer's market. And the things you do to it, guitars are a musical instrument. They're not things of wonder that have a fancy label on them that make them worth more than something else. So the repair, whether successful or not, has to include a consideration of the acoustic quality of the guitar at the end and how much you have robbed of it robbed it rented lips of its originality so now in the next episode you're going to start seeing us putting pieces together gluing things up and going in and supporting the repairs that we have made thus far don't forget give me a like and a subscribe and i will see you soon